Ray Neo has sent me their Air 2S display glasses. They got micro LEDs in here. Really excited to check these out and see how they look. Comes with a nice glasses case here. Looks like a little bigger than some sunglasses. And here they are. We got a few accessories here. USB-C to USB-C. Angled USB-C for easy connection to this arm here. Extra nose pad. And that is what comes in this box. They also sent me their Pocket TV. This allows you to use these without a smartphone and just have a bunch of streaming apps on one little device. Plugs in, save the battery on your smartphone. The battery on this one's supposed to last for five and a half hours, they say. Let's see what this looks like. This is about the size of a TV remote, but it has a whole computer in here. Pretty cool. And yet another USB-C to USB-C cable, and that's going to connect either power or glasses. So you've got glasses connection right here, goes straight to the glasses. You could also give power to the device at the same time. Let's put this all together and see what it looks like. We got the computer set up, we got the glasses out. Let's plug them in and see how easy it is to get this going. And there we go. It took about one second for the screen to show up right here. I see a very clear view of my screen. I can read things very easily. Now I'm actually gonna read some stats about these glasses that I have up on my screen right here. We've got two micro LED displays, 120 Hertz refresh rate. And if I look really closely, I really don't see any pixels. It just looks like I'm looking at a giant screen in front of me. And this is absolutely workable. The screen is not gonna be fixed in front of you. It's gonna just float wherever I'm looking and be pretty jittery as I move my head. If I'm just laying back and watching a movie, that's fine. If I'm trying to do some serious work, I can get away with this, but it might be a little distracting with this kind of jittery screen here. The nice thing is that I can actually look beneath the screen here and see my normal display. So if I wanna set up an external monitor, in a sense, not just screen mirroring, but have an external monitor and have a different screen up here and then a different screen down here, I can kind of use this as two extra displays. Now, this is not gonna be like a Vision Pro where you have it just fixed right in front of you. This, again, with, with its moving, it's a little distracting, but you can definitely get away with it if you need that extra screen real estate and a small form factor. But while I have these on, I wanna play around with some physical buttons as well. Right here, we have brightness. I'm seeing 10 levels of brightness. I mean, I think I'd wanna be using this at the highest brightness level, but if you are sensitive, you can go right down to kind of a very low level of brightness and then actually start to see through that screen into your environment, but it's gonna be uh, a pretty opaque lens. So it's almost like really dark sunglasses when you're on that low brightness setting. Let me turn this back up though. On the other side, we've got a few like display settings. I'm seeing whisper mode, refresh rate, 60 versus 120 hertz, and then display color. We've got standard, vibrant, and soft. And I see a few differences. This would be really good for uh, if you want kind of a softer light if you're working for a while, or something more vibrant if you're gonna watch a movie or something like that. And then finally, we've got volume. These glasses are supposed to have really good audio because they've got multiple speakers on these arms and they call it super linear speakers. And when I adjust the volume, let's first play some music and see how this sounds. So I'm trying to play some audio. It's still coming through the speakers. I'd actually go into my settings on the computer, which again, I'm looking at this right here and I'm changing my sound settings to go through the, the smart glasses. So, and there they go, immediately going through the glasses. This is max volume right now. I feel like I have to yell over it to kind of allow you to hear my voice and I'll turn that down. That sounds really good. Clear, crisp audio and very smooth. Let me get some bass going. All right, so the bass honestly feels a little bit weak, but for little speakers in these glasses here, this is absolutely usable, uh, super loud. And let me ask uh, you who's filming here, let me know. How loud does this sound to you? I can hear it. I mean, tell, tell me when you can stop hearing it. Now. Okay. So he's saying he can't hear it right now. 
I can still hear some pretty good sound. And in a sense, that's kind of private there where I can listen to a little bit or podcast or something, a, little, a low volume to myself, but then to anybody, even a couple feet away, it's very hard for them to hear it. So that's nice kind of personalized audio there. So we went over the settings with the laptop using this as your external or mirrored monitor. Now, again, they provided us with this pocket TV. So let's see what this is all about. I'm just gonna power it on. We're gonna plug it in. Again, there's two ports. We got the display out to the glasses and power if we wanna power this thing while we run the glasses through it. But again, this should last for over five hours. So let's see how fast this is. And I'm in. And now I've got the full Google TV interface right here in front of me. Uh, I'm gonna try to get some shots through the lens as well. We'll show you what that looks like. But in the meantime, I'll kind of talk through, we have the different apps, everything you could imagine, Prime Video, Disney, Hulu, YouTube, YouTube TV. One thing that's notably missing is Netflix, but there is a Netflix web app that they link to here that you can use, and it's a pretty smooth process. They call it Web Netflix, I see right here. Now, in my opinion, one of the most strenuous apps for these TV OSs is always YouTube TV. So I'm just turning that on real fast and let's see how quickly and interactive that feels with the OS. So now I'm in. That took maybe six or eight seconds to actually load the YouTube TV app. Now when I'm in here, it's great. I mean, I'm watching live TV in these glasses right here. I'm seeing a giant screen. And now I wanna actually kind of show you what this screen looks like from my field of view. I'm seeing a screen that looks like it's about 10 feet wide and maybe 12 feet away from me. They say in the official marketing materials that it's supposed to be showing you a 201 inch screen, six meters or call it maybe 19 feet away. And yeah, I mean, it, it depends on maybe just your, your own opinion on that a little bit. In my opinion, I've talked about this in other videos, it's not as much about how big is the screen and how far away is it, it's how clear is the screen and what's the field of view. So the field of view for me, it's like watching a screen just like this, and that is big enough, and it's not too big. You don't want your screen to be so big that you're kind of looking back and forth, and you can't really look back and forth that way when the screen is moving with you. You can kind of move your eyeballs like that, but that's not gonna be comfortable. So you want people to see everything comfortably right in front of you. And with all that said, as I scroll around and kind of watch some live TV, the interface feels pretty smooth. I would say maybe 15 to 20% slower than what I would be expecting with like an Apple TV hooked up to my normal TV, but otherwise absolutely usable. I'm watching live TV again as I click the home button, already home. It's pretty quick and immediate. It feels like a very smooth interface. If you're not familiar with the Google TV platform, you can look up some videos. I mean, that's what you would expect uh, when you put on these glasses. There's also a shortcut button. So for me, I set this shortcut to go to Apple TV. So you click it once, load up Apple TV, and we're already there. And then of course, you've got some volume, you've got different little physical buttons, back button, home button, microphone, if you wanna search throughout the uh, the whole interface. So that's gonna be most of the features of this device. You can also put a micro SD card into this and play your own media. You can watch 3D videos because you have these two screens in here. So that's gonna work really well uh, also. And overall, it's a pretty solid device. The audio is great. The screens look really good. You just don't have that ability to fix the screen in a position. So just make sure if you're gonna get these, you're gonna expect to see that screen kind of moving with you as you are wearing this. I want to try these glasses again at night to get a feel for the brightness and some audio settings and all that. I've got this on right now at max volume and I'm wondering right now, can you hear this? Are you filming? Can you hear the audio coming from this? Yes, I can. Okay. It's pretty clear. Not very clear, but I can hear it. Okay. And you're about three feet from me. Now there's a whisper mode that I'm going to turn on. And how about right now? No, no, I can't hear it. Really? Not at all. Nope. Okay. Very cool. So I just turned on whisper mode, which allows the speakers to kind of go more into my ears. It turns down that max volume a little bit, but it's very clear to hear on my side. And 
the person filming can't even hear that in a quiet room just a few feet away. Also, now that I'm testing this at night, I can see that those 10 levels of brightness start to get more useful. When I'm at max brightness right here, I'm kind of blinding myself a little bit. These screens really do get very bright. Again, during the daytime, I will be using this at max brightness, but now in a dark room, I would probably want to be at about 50%. That's pretty easy on the eyes. If I go down to the lowest setting, that's probably like right before bedtime in a super dark room, that's probably pretty useful. So these 10 levels are actually pretty useful depending on the light settings that you have. Also, I gotta say, I've been wearing these for a while now and there's just no problem with weight. These things are super light. They feel like a kind of a heavy pair of sunglasses, but there's gonna be no problem really to wear these as long as you want. I feel no neck fatigue, no fatigue kind of on the bridge of my nose, no extra pressure. They just feel super comfortable. And again, could wear these all day long if I wanted to work. The only reason I'd probably wanna take these off is maybe if my eyes started to get uh, sore from just staring at the screen all day long. But in terms of the actual physical comfort, on my face, these things feel fantastic. And that's it on these glasses. If you wanna learn more about the Ray Neo Air 2S, feel free to hit the link below. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.